Hi, I'm Jerry Ellsworth, and as promised in an earlier video, I'm going to show you how to build EL power supplies to drive EL wire and EL displays. So in my setup here, I have an EL uh, nightlight. This is just a plain nightlight that you plug into the wall. To drive electroluminescent displays, you need between 100 volts and a few hundred volts. And it needs to be alternating current. And by plugging this into a 120 volt, volt wall outlet, that satisfies that requirement. Um, different EL um, technologies need different frequencies, but it's really not too picky. So almost anything that we do will light these things up as long as it's alternating current and in that, those parameters. Um, I don't recommend that you experiment with EL um, devices plugged straight into the wall since your wall outlet can deliver a lot of amperage and you probably don't want to burn your place down or burn the tip off your finger. Alright, so the first circuit I'm going to show is, it's, a, it's called the Tickler circuit. It's kind of based off of the old um, uh, ignition system used in Model T's and that's how I guess the old timers called it the Tickler. It's kind of a funny name, huh? It's based on a relay and the relay is normally closed, so the uh, voltage will go in through one lead of the relay and then through the relay down into the solenoid that drives the relay and then back down to ground. So when you power this up, it's going to energize the solenoid and then it's going to open up that switch, which is then going to collapse the magnetic field and the switch will close again, so it'll oscillate. And um, when it does that, you in the solenoid you have an expanding and contracting magnetic field and this um, this magnetic kick will generate voltages that are much higher than what you supply so by supplying for instance 20 volts you can get 100, 150 volts out of this particular circuit. It depends on the solenoid that you use that by putting your EL display across the solenoid this inductive kick will light up the display and it oscillates back and forth and, and satisfies the AC requirement that we need. Here, this is the configuration that I have here. I have a uh, relay hooked up to my power supply and configured so it'll oscillate. So if I turn the power supply up, we can get the display to light. It's very flickery and uh, not very consistent. That's kind of uh, resistance and issues with the making and breaking of the contacts in here in the relay. Okay, we can take this a step further. That was taking 20 volts to light the display. Um, sometimes it may not be convenient to have um, 20 volts around. And oh, by the way, this isn't very practical, but it's, it's kind of a cool circuit anyway. All right. Um, so we're going to take the same relay circuit, but this time we're going to use a step-up transformer. A step-up transformer has fewer windings on the uh, primary side and the secondary side have many more windings. And a good place to get a step-up transformer is to reverse a step-down transformer. And this is just a regular AC wall wart. I opened it up and removed the bridge rectifier and the filter cap so now it's just a transformer alone and I'm going to run it in reverse so where normally 110 volts would be going in we're going to be getting 110 volts out because we're going to be supplying pulsating 9 volts to um, this what used to be the secondary side so if I reconfigure my circuit here a little bit so I'm going to take these two wires. These are hooked to my display. And I'm going to hook these up to the two terminals that these two blades that go into the wall outlet. And I'm going to change my relay here so the voltage has to go from the power supply through the step up transformer and back to the relay where it's being um, pulsated, making and breaking, collapsing the magnetic field out here now in this the step up transformer. So if we turn this on, I'm going to bring it up to about 10 volts. So about 10 volts is about the same brightness as we had before um, when we were putting 20 volts through this. Now if I bring this up to 20 volts, it's fairly bright. Not too bad. 
but really not practical because it's it's very loud and noisy. Um, so I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to keep the EL display, and I'm going to talk about the blocking oscillator. The blocking oscillator also uses a step-up transformer, but this time I selected a transformer out of my junk bin that had three terminals on the um, the primary side. Normally this was a step-down transformer with multiple taps on the back side, but we're going to run it in reverse again. I'm not even sure what this came from. I just broke the circuit board off of the, the original um, bigger circuit board and just kept the, the transformer. So it has an NPN transistor that's going to switch current through the primary side and through an RC constant this is going to be regulating how fast the transistor is turning on and off so we're doing the same thing as the relay before but it's going to be a little bit more controlled and of course quieter because it's not going to have this noisy relay clicking and by tuning these these values in here we can change the frequency that this oscillator oscillates at. It's, it's a factor of the transformer, the resistor, the capacitor um, here. Um, right now just these particular values I'm, I'm seeing on the oscilloscope 2.7 kilohertz um, which seems to work great. So let me hook this up. So I'm going to take my EL display I'm going to hook it to the secondary side just clipping it on to to the to right here. All right. Now this is the cool part. I have a three volt coin cell. So if I hook it up to the two power leads, it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to hold it here. Look at. Oops. There it is. Very 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 bright. Can you see how bright that is all off a 3 volt coin cell. And people asked in other other videos in the comments what was the noise in the background, the, the, the kind of whining sound. That whining sound comes from magnetoconstriction and um, being able to hear the windings move around in the transformer. So since this is oscillating the kilohertz range, that's in the human hearing range, Sometimes, depending on your transformer, you can hear it. One thing you can do is you can do what's called potting. You can take this whole assembly and sink it in epoxy or wax to dampen that sound and keep those windings from, from vibrating and keeping the iron core from expanding and contracting because of the magnetic field. Okay, now before we end this video, I wanted to show how you can discover what type of transformer you have out of your junk bin. Um, so, one thing I do if I'm looking for a center tap transformer like this, so this is very important because we needed this for the, to apply the power to the circuit is on the center tap, is I look at the edge of the transformer right down in here and I look at the leads and if there's two wires coming together, that's most likely your center tap. And then if there's single wires, those are probably your outer taps. The next thing I do is I take my ohm meter and I start measuring the resistance between the taps. In this particular transformer, it was 20 ohms between both these taps. That tells me that there's approximately symmetrical windings, same number of windings in here. This oscillator will work with different windings, but you can determine if there's a connection clear across and connections to the center tap. And also to know that it's a step-up transformer, if you measure the secondary and it has a very high ohms to it, that means there's a lot of wire wound around in there. More wire, the higher the ohms typically you know that you're you're in the right ballpark at least. Um, of course you can just go out and buy the transformer that you want, but you know it's it's fun to dig around and find this stuff. 
okay, I think that's all I have to say about this. If you like this type of stuff, go ahead and subscribe to my videos because I'm always doing really nerdy videos. Um, leave some comments. Don't comment about the dead pixel. I know. Someday I'll get a new camera. Um, I'm pretty excited about this stuff. It's cool that it runs on coin cells. Um, probably not going to probably not going to last too long on a little coin cell. Of course, you can run this off a D-cell um, battery or you know, here's an old, let's see if I can get this to go across here. This is an old leaky um, 1.2 volt cell. Yep, there it goes. Yeah, this, this old half wore out battery can make it operate. So, Alright, I guess that's enough rambling for now. Thanks. Bye.